Being a Nintendo fan was pretty rough back in 2012. The Wii U released, and <laughs> you know how that went. Games felt like flop after flop, and it just never stopped. It felt like there was no oomph or excitement. Everything felt the same. I didn't even know what the word new meant anymore. I remember it like it was yesterday. As the years went by, it didn't get that much better. If anything, it got a little worse. I mean, yeah, there were some sparks of light here and there, but the reality was the Nintendo community was holding on to its last breath, and Nintendo needed to do something about it. Throughout the Wii U's lifespan, I couldn't help but feel meh. All right, maybe I'm over-exaggerating a little. I mean, we got games like Mario Kart 8, Smash 4, Super Mario 3D World, Mario Maker, but let's be honest here, by the time 2016 rolled around, we were all dying for something. Star Fox Zero released that year. It was time for a change. And boy, did Nintendo do just that. In October of 2016, the company finally unveiled their new big project, the Switch. The system looked slick, a brand new Zelda was launching with it, and everything looked great. It seemed as though Nintendo was making a turn for the better. But it wasn't until January of 2017 where things got a little interesting. Nintendo shared more details on their new upcoming console, showcased a couple new games, and then it happened. The screen cuts to a big city scene. The camera pans down to Main Street. And then it hit me. I was shocked. This moment was insane. I mean, Mario was walking amongst real people. I'm not sure you can guess how I and many others reacted to all of this. <laughs> Ew! It was weird. I'm not gonna lie. It caught me off guard, but I was in love with it. The Nintendo community needed this moment. We needed something completely new, something completely fresh. And after years of waiting for something, Nintendo finally provided and Super Mario Odyssey was revealed to the world. It made me so happy seeing Mario Odyssey for the very first time. Having that feeling of the unknown and the excitement that came with that felt so refreshing, because up until that point, I haven't had that feeling in literally years. But things only got better. E3 2017, Nintendo unveiled more information about Mario Odyssey and things just kept coming and coming. You can possess objects and enemies with your hat? I mean, wait, hold up, what? Tons of new kingdoms and environments, costumes, power-ups, characters. You can turn into a freaking dinosaur. And whoa, whoa, whoa. I couldn't handle it. I was overwhelmed. I get hyped just thinking about it. All of this was fine and dandy, but to make matters even better, this image was thrown around the internet. And that's when I knew this was gonna be huge. Super Mario Odyssey was released worldwide on October 27th, 2017, and it's one experience that I will never forget. Everything from its music, movement, characters, anything you can think of felt fresh. It was easily one of the most enjoyable games I've ever played. Just when you think you've seen it all, Mario Odyssey is a gift that keeps on giving. But okay, honestly, <laughs> I, I can't hold it back any longer. Can I just let it out? Can I just talk about Super Mario Odyssey? Okay, where to begin? Um, so this is Mario Odyssey, and it's really good. There's a reason why this is one of the best-selling Mario games of all time. It's polish, it's innovative, it's fun. Let's just say Breath of the Wild wasn't the only breath of fresh air in 2017. Mario Odyssey's development started after the release of Super Mario 3D World back in late 2013. It was designed to appeal more to Mario's core audience rather than the casual crowd. They put more of an emphasis on discovery and exploration when it came to the overall structure of the game. Most Mario games before had more of a linear approach to its design, focusing more on getting to a goal rather than exploring around a sandbox of discovery. In fact, the last game in the series to do this was actually Super Mario Sunshine released all the way back in 2002. Up until the year Odyssey released, the exploration 3D platform genre was dormant for a while. But once 2017 hit, for some reason the floodgates opened. We got Ukulele, Super Lucky's Tale, A Hat in Time, and of course the main attraction itself, Super Mario Odyssey. It was the talk of the town. The Switch was selling like crazy, so combine that with a major Mario release and that's just a simple equation that equals success. But I don't think it was just because of the success of the Switch. I mean, yeah, that helps out a ton. 
but personally, I think it was because of how different it really was. You can be a freaking dinosaur. If I'm being honest, Mario was feeling a bit stale up until this point. Just felt kind of same old, same old. Super Mario 3D World was the previous mainline game, and it was a fun romp at the time, but to me, nothing really stood out. Don't get me wrong, I think it's a fine game with great level design, but it didn't really feel like it had a lasting impact like most 3D Marios. And Wii U sales could have been the reason for that, but if you look back, aside from a small number of things, it wasn't all too crazy. I mean, you could be a cat. But with Mario Odyssey, this game sticks out like a sore thumb. Boom, 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 boom. Odyssey manages to create so many distinct experiences throughout the whole journey, it becomes incredibly hard to forget anything. There were never before seen characters, enemies, mechanics, and kingdoms with hundreds of things to come across at your own pace. You weren't just playing Odyssey, you were experiencing it. With Odyssey's unique mechanics, you weren't just fighting tanks, you were being tanks. You weren't just killing Goombas, you were being Goombas. You weren't just walking on manholes because you were stinking being manholes. And I'm not even kidding. The game brought countless things to the table, but never felt overwhelming because nothing was forced onto you. Everything came with discovery, which makes these certain experiences that much more unforgettable. Mario Odyssey is a game filled to the top with secrets and unique styles of gameplay that I will never forget. Compared to all the games in Mario's career, this is by far one of the most innovative and expressive, and I'm surprised they managed to cram all this stuff into one small, bite-sized cartridge, because this tiny little thing is one giant package. So buckle up, because we're just getting started. So to give you guys a little more context, Bowser kidnaps Peach and forces her to marriage. But in order to make that wedding happen, he'll need all the essential materials to set up the event. So Bowser sets off on a little journey exploring vast new kingdoms to steal all the right wedding items and marry Peach. As Mario tries to save her, however, Bowser boots him off the ship all the way into the Cap Kingdom. There you find your new friend Cappy, whose sister Tiara has also been kidnapped, so Mario and Cappy decide to team up and save both damsels in distress. Eventually, Mario stumbles across the good old Odyssey, an old ship that needs power moons in order for it to function. So it's your job to find moons, power the Odyssey, and chase Bowser to bring peace to all the kingdoms and stop the wedding. The story isn't really the main attraction. I mean, it's a Mario game, what do you expect? But at least it's something a little more interesting than usual. But okay, let's get into the part everyone actually cares about, the gameplay. Mario Odyssey is made up of multiple different kingdoms ranging from all sorts of themes. Like mentioned before, the Odyssey is powered by power moons, and for some reason everyone and their mom has one just laying around, so the whole time you'll be exploring around each area trying to find where and how to get any of these bad boys. And that's it. The game does keep you on track with story progression moons, but aside from those, it's free game. Mario Odyssey wants you to explore. It rewards players for searching every nook and cranny because most likely, there's gonna be a moon there. The game does an incredible job giving you this sense of freedom. Each kingdom is essentially one big playground with tons of things to do and interact with. It was genuinely exciting entering a new kingdom because there was tons of stuff to discover. It never felt overwhelming or oversaturated. You could do everything at your own pace. The story progression moons are just a simple way to keep you on track with the main story, but very rarely is it ever mandatory to do. Again, there's so much stuff in each area, but it never feels overwhelming with how much there is because the game allows you to do everything on your own time. It also feels like it never wastes your time. The whole game is grab and go. You grab a moon, you keep going. You get enough moons, you move on. The pacing of the experience is completely reliant on yourself. You could be in a kingdom for hours or you could grab all the necessary moons and progress. Odyssey provides so many different choices and routes and leaves it all up for you to decide. And I think that's one of its biggest strengths. One of the biggest things that helps with Odyssey's sense of freedom are the kingdoms themselves. They're so distinct and range with size. They're so vast with tons of things to interact with and there's always something that catches your eye. Not one kingdom ever feels the same. Each one brings completely different atmospheres, characters, and most surprisingly, different styles of gameplay. All because of Odyssey's one main mechanic. Yeah. 
This is a Mario game. The capture mechanic, one of the most bizarre things you'll ever see in a Mario game. When I first saw this, I didn't really know how to react. It was definitely different, but looking back now, I wouldn't want it any other way. This single mechanic is what makes Odyssey, well, Odyssey. For the most part, whatever you throw your hat at, you become. It's such a weird idea, yet it works so well. If you think about it, the possibilities are endless, and it seems like Nintendo has only scratched the surface with it. They make it seem so seamless, you just simply throw your cap and see what happens. You can capture enemies, characters, objects, and every single one feels and controls so different from one another. The diverse style of gameplay constantly keeps it fresh with literally whatever you're doing. You can feel how a Cheap Cheap would feel. You can feel how a Chain Chomp would feel. It's kind of crazy how many different types of control and abilities you get to experience with all these captures. It creates this interesting way to play where you're not just killing the enemies, you're playing as them. They're not just simple obstacles, but rather more like pieces to different puzzles in every kingdom. It's truly amazing the way they incorporate this single mechanic into tons of different scenarios throughout the whole adventure. But your hat isn't just used for capturing. It's a weapon, it's a utility for simple things like opening doors. It's a frisbee for this cute little dog and oh, that, that, that's actually cute. The simple action of throwing your hat can be used in many ways, but there's one action that really sticks out from the rest and helps out with probably my favorite thing about this game. Let's talk about Odyssey's movement. So with each kingdom being pretty expansive, it was important for them to nail the way Mario moves and interacts with each area. Mario's moveset not only had to blend well with the design of each kingdom, but most importantly, it had to feel good. And it feels really good. Very rarely does a game make me sad when it's all over just because of how fun it is to move around and play the game. And Super Mario Odyssey managed to do just that. Over the years, Nintendo has done a good job at making mainline Mario's feel good overall, but I think Odyssey is perfection when it comes to control. I mean, just look at this move set. This list is bigger than my self-esteem. It's amazing how seamless every move connects and flows together. One move leads to the next and creates these chains of inputs that feel so satisfying. My only real complaint is they tried to incorporate motion controls into literally every single move in the entire game, but luckily, they're optional, and most of the time, they're not necessary. There are so many tools you can use at your disposal when exploring around, and there's really never a correct way to do anything. Going back to talking about the freedom the game gives you, there's no rules when exploring or collecting moons. You get all these different moves and tools to use however you want. It gives you so much freedom, it's not afraid to restrict you in any way. If you think you can get to point A to point B, go for it. Sometimes the game even rewards you for thinking outside the box. Personally, I think Mario Odyssey's movement is the biggest strength this game has to offer. Every move can be used in so many different ways, and the fact that they're all programmed to flow from move to move makes Odyssey have some of the most smoothest and satisfying controls I have ever played in any video game. The controls plus the amount of freedom the game brings and encourages is such a perfect blend, and I think that's the beauty of Mario Odyssey. I can't really express how much this game impressed me. From the beautiful environments to the most satisfying controls, and I haven't even talked about the music. Jeez. So many great tracks, so many catchy songs, such a wide range of music all orchestrated, and they sound so good. Everything is so colorful, expressive, and has so much charm. Mario Odyssey sets a good example of how modern 3D platformers should be made. This game is overflowing with polish. Every aspect has so much care and thought put into it and makes this game one of the best experiences on the Nintendo Switch. It has so much freedom, it's so expressive, it's so ambitious, and it feels so incredible to play. Mario Odyssey was a showcase of just how creative Nintendo really is. It wasn't just some brand new game, it brought life back into the company. And to me, it was truly a breath of fresh air.